All right, I'm gonna work on the little Briggs here, little water cool Briggs. I don't know why I left you guys off, because it's uh, been about a week since I worked on this. It's probably only been a couple days since uh, you guys seen the last video. Because, uh, like I tell you guys, some of these videos are uh, sometimes a month behind. What I'm doing today, you're not going to see for another month. But anyway, uh, turned out pretty good. So I'm going uh, to try and sand some of this and see what it looks like. But uh, but before we do any of that, uh, I want you to take a look at this other thing here. A lot of you guys have seen it before because it was in the first video we ever started. But uh, I know a lot of subscribers I have, you know, they uh, they just pick up the series, you know, uh, after the tenth video or so and continue on from there. So they they don't really know what's going on. I can tell by the the comments uh, I get about uh, cooling and uh, the the water pockets and. You need these uh, these inlets and outlets uh, higher and all that stuff. Well, here's the engine compared to the size of the radiator I'm using. This radiator is uh, just an old heater core out of a, a 30s car or something like that. I picked it up because uh, I liked it. It looked like almost looked like a Model A. See that grill? My arms aren't long enough to show you, but uh, they're almost identical. And Mike had a good idea. Mike, Mike wants to uh, wants to try and get a Briggs emblem and put it on here. See if I can make something that tiny. That was a pretty cool idea, though. But anyway, compared to the engine, even if I don't raise this up, the fill is going to be up top here. I want to I want to take these uh, these metal pipes off and stuff like that, and uh, put the fill back here. But here's a bleeder up top. Then you got a drain plug on the bottom. And uh, a lot of the newer guys don't realize what we're doing here. You know? I don't know if you can see it, but we're going to have a, a, an aluminum head that's going to have water in it. The radiator is going to have water in it. You're going to have this pump here that's going to be able to pump 5 to 10 gallons per minute, depending on the sprockets or pulleys we use. And all that, plus the chamber. I don't know how much water that'll hold, but uh, all to try and cool a two-inch piston, you know. And everybody's saying it's going to overheat and it's going to, you know, have air pockets and everything. I don't think it's going to matter. I mean, there's going to be so much water flowing through there. I might have a problem with it being too cool, but uh, I can adjust that with, the, like I say, the size of the poison and, and the water flow. You know, worrying about thermostats and everything. I mean, it's. It's a lawnmower engine, you know, a small one at that. It's, it's only uh, probably one and a half horse or less. So, all right, before I uh, get on to this, I didn't mean to ramble. I hate rambling. But uh, before I get on to that, I think I'm going to take this apart and uh, make sure everything's okay. And I was going to take these pipes out. So, let me uh, throw you up on the tripod there and we'll, we'll take that apart and see what's, see what's going on. Okay. Another way to control the temperature too is uh, we're going to have a fan back here, a six inch fan, cooling that, and depending on how fast we're going to have that going, that'll also control uh, how cool it'll be. But like I say, you're not going to have any trouble with a two inch piston. I mean, come on. Alright. You know what else I was going to do? Well, I got this here. You can frame there. It's going to take this, uh, maybe take this bleeder out. There we go. Because like I say, we're not going to need the bleeder because it, we're going to have a, you know, a hole up here, you know, a, a radiator fill back here. But what I was going to do was, uh, I was going to get a, a temperature gauge. I guess they call them thermometers. And uh, I was going to cut it off to the length I needed it and uh, epoxy a a fitting on there, you know, it's, that's an eighth inch fitting, eighth inch pipe thread, and then put it in there. I like this gauge here, but I, I'm not sure if it's going to be too big, you know. I got another one here, and I think that might be too small, you know. It's like the the three bears, you know, it's got to be just right. So uh, maybe I'll find a different one. 
right now I'm, I'm leaning towards the smaller one. But like I say, I like the, the bigger one's only one inch, and the other one's one and three quarters. So I guess if I got uh, an inch and a quarter, it would be perfect. But anyway, that's down the road a little bit. Right, let's take this apart. I loosened the screws a bit. Let me shut these off. You don't have to watch me take these screws out. And I'll turn you back on when I'm ready to take it apart. All right. Not much to it. You had the four screws here holding on this shroud. I'm lucky this thing's in good shape. Well, here's the price. 30 bucks. I don't, I don't even think I, uh, I was able to talk the guy down. He held it was 30 bucks. And then just hold on. That's, that's, uh, I mean, not, I could deal with that. I mean, the chrome is in there. It's not pitted or nothing. In fact, this feels like a casting. But anyway, I mean, that, that's going to look okay. Now, I don't need these, so I was doing, I was uh, spraying them, been, uh, cleaning them and been spraying them. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait and let Mike try and take them out. I even heated them up a little bit, but I didn't want to heat them up too much because it's uh, they're probably soldered down here. I'm not sure, but anyway, I don't I don't want to uh, I don't want to loosen any anything up. So that's it. Not much to this. Looks like the, the core is in pretty good shape. I don't see any uh, any dents in it or anything. Any little abrasion marks. Okay. All right. I guess all I have to do is uh, take these pipes off now and uh, and clean it out. Pretty cool. Pretty cool what they used to do back in the day, huh? All right. Let me put this off to the side and uh, do a little sanding on this and. Uh, See what we can do. Get this thing back in shape. All right, got the sides done here. I'm happy with it. Came out pretty good. Now I'm, uh, I'm gonna try and do the back here. Make that flat. A few people ask me why I wear these uh, big ass gloves. Uh, because if you wear the big ones and they're oversized and everything, they come off real easy and you don't sweat in them. I made a mistake and I picked the wrong ones up earlier and uh, look at they're all soaking wet and everything. They, they just make your hands sweat. So, uh, you know, for this kind of stuff here that's not technical, you're not be grabbing anything. They're, they're great. If, if somebody came up with a, with a nice set that didn't, didn't make you sweat, it would be great. <coughs> but I haven't found them. And this uh, works for me, so. Is your answer on why I wear them big ass gloves? All right, let me throw this in the vise here so I have something to hold it, and uh, maybe I'll show you a little bit of sanding. Okay, should be pretty easy because this is, uh, like I say, this is going to be flat and flush to the the intake and the exhaust there, so. Just saw away. Got a plug here, I might have to send in a little further. paper or something. I put more epoxy on here than I needed so this should be should be the only coat I need. Alright, 
I'm gonna shut you guys off. I think you've seen enough of this sand, and, and then when we get down to, to almost flush, we'll turn you back on. All right? All right? Okay. All right. All right. We're just about where we want it. That looks like it's protruding, but it's actually not. I'm surprised, but uh, that sandpaper, that 36 grit, is actually uh, sanding down that brass. Okay. Alright, that's where we want. We're all flush here for the gasket, for the carburetor gasket, and the exhaust. A tiny little hole there, and uh, I think we got a couple right here, little potholes, but uh, no biggie. Matter of fact, I probably don't have to fix them because uh, they're going to be covered, but uh, I might anyway. But anyway, looks like we'll be able to get a nice edge on this. Just round it a little bit. I mean, we're not going to uh, go too bad. Yeah, I'm liking it. All right, I think we're going to sand the bottom. The sand ain't going to take much bottom. I'm just going to just clean it and finish it up a little bit because it's uh, it's pretty much already there. All right, let me do a little more playing. All right, these edges are looking good. Yeah, I'm loving it. Shaping up faster than I thought it would. I still gotta go up here. Alrighty. Alright, I'm gonna try and uh, smooth out this uh, top half here. This is all gonna be freehand, so uh, this may take me a little bit. Because like I said, it's pretty much all already there. Funny thing is this watch my plate. You're not even gonna see it. You're not gonna see any of that, so uh, it doesn't have to be all that critical, but you know how Road King is. If something's worth doing, it's worth doing right. Alright. Alright. Got the top done on this side. I got to do the other side, but uh, I'm liking it. I'm just going to knock the edge off of here. Not too much. Just enough to give it a little bit of a factory look. I'm going to try and keep it... Uh, give it a nice line. Here we go. I think that's it. Sometimes you, uh, you try to do too much and it, uh, it ruins it. There we go. Yeah, I'm liking that. Yeah. And I remember when I was brazing that, you guys were saying, that looks like hell. I wouldn't bring that to a dog shell. All right, let me turn this around and uh, do the other side. All right, I'm liking it. We knock this edge off here, and we're done with the top. Let's say you don't want to knock too much off. Yep, yeah, buddy. You go off there and see what it looks like. little pinholes. I might put some uh, glazing putty on here. Or maybe just uh, thick primer. We'll see. Alright, yeah, I'm liking the way that looks so far. The whole top half looks good. It doesn't really matter what I do with the bottom, but uh, the top is done here. Alright, I'm going to turn it over and uh, do that. You know why? 
that's just just how I am. All right, I got the one half sanded over here. I'll tell you that little trick I showed you with the uh, wet finger and stuff to smooth this stuff out saved me hours and hours and hours of uh, sanding over here. I've only been digging around with this here for about 15-20 uh, minutes now, and uh, I'm loving it. All I got to do is really just make the edge here. Like I say, you're never going to see the bottom here, but uh, yeah, that's a nice edge. I'm loving it. I'm loving the way that's coming out. What do you guys think? Yeah, over here. What do you think, huh? All right. Let me uh, finish doing the other side of the bottom here. All right, I'm gonna call that done. I mean, I might still put a little glazing putty on there to fill in some of the little pinholes and maybe some of the scratches, but uh, other than that, it's done. It's uh, got the shape of the head and everything. I'm happy with it. I think it's gonna look good. I like this little wing that comes out here too. Gives a little character. That was Briggs' idea, not mine. All right. Like I said, I'm happy with the way it is. And, uh, you know, not much to this video. You know, a little bit of sanding and stuff. But, uh, you know, it's all part of the process. So, I hope you guys liked it. All righty. Enough of this.